Okay, Canadian officials and doctors are reassuring Canadians that mixing and matching COVID-19 vaccines is safe and effective. This comes after it was reported that the World Health Organization's chief scientist said it could be a dangerous trend and chaotic in countries where citizens decide to take a second or a third or a fourth dose. So uh, everyone is talking about this story. What was your reaction to this? Well, certainly the countries that have done a lot of mixing and matching, like Canada, are talking about this story. Because guess what? I don't see it in any American outlets anywhere because they're not really mixing and matching. You're right. So, yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's not a I thing I just there. realized fact, that, Mel. You're totally right. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't want to muddy the waters, but they actually, FDA has not approved mixing and matching there, but the, the situation is very different there. And I think that this, this a quote from the World Health Organization head scientist, it's, listen, it's been, this headline has gone around the world, and this is where broken telephone is really problematic, because the headline should have said, which is what the context was of this statement, do not be selling and pushing boosters like a third shot or more, or don't be out vaccine shopping when so much of the world has yet to receive their first dose. So that's really what the scientist was saying. I think we all understand that vaccine hoarding by countries is a problem. Not only vaccine hoarding, but they've left the barn when half the horses are still in the barn suffering. And so I think that that's where she was coming from. In fact, another person from the World Health Organization, his name is, uh, I think, Mike Ryan, and he is the head of the emergencies program there. And he said a perfect quote to sort of clarify where we're all coming from here. And that is basically saying, like, don't try to make your cake, eat it too, and then continue to make cake and eat that cake too. So I think what the message here is, it says we will look back in anger and we will look back in shame if countries use precious doses on booster shots at a time when vulnerable people are still dying without vaccines elsewhere. These are people who want to have their cake and eat it, and then they want to make some more cake and eat it too. This is about vaccine equality around the world. This is less to do with mixing and matching. Mel, you, you guys, didn't this make you sort of weary or concerned about how important headline writing is and yeah. how important it is to aggregate, um, you know, all of these news outlets aggregating like a press release? Because I read that headline and I saw it on Twitter. I saw it everywhere and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm what's going to happen to me? I'm, I mixed my two doses like we all did, I think. But then I happened, we were sharing this headline, and then a friend of ours sent us another tweet by an MD, actually, in McMaster, which I can almost see out my front window, who <laughs> clarified, who, who said, who's cheap, who said this headline that's being shared all over is problematic, and it is misleading for all the reasons that you said, Mel. So... That is what sort of scared me. Like, what if we didn't share that tweet? What if there are Canadians right now who aren't on Twitter, who don't have a little network of sharing this information, and they've canceled well, there their are. second dose there, because it doesn't Well, match. I just watched it this morning, Jess. Actually, yeah. there was a, a news reporting going on at lineups for vaccines, and when they were told what na vaccine was going to be given today, uh, they walked out of the line. And this <gasps> is a travesty. Because yeah. what we... Like, I mean, I to me, this makes me incensed for all the reasons you just said, for the bad reporting, for the limited reporting, but also for the communication on the part of the of the World Health Organization chief scientist. I do think it was, it was a bit confusing. And the thing is, is that, yes, I mixed and matched. I would have also taken the same dose. I was, I, I'll take whatever. It's not because I like <laughs> love vaccines so much. I just am doing the right thing for vulnerable people in the community. We can see the impact of more and more people getting vaccines and what it's done to the numbers. I mean, to me, that's all the evidence I needed. And it's funny, Lainey, this is something you talked about a long time ago. Like we've all been mixing and matching over the years. Whenever we went and got vaccines, flu shots, whatever. We never knew what company made what. So, it's like, true. to me, this is kind of an irrelevant point. We are all in this, point. you know, we should be in this together. And I just think, I cannot believe, again, that health officials don't get better um, skills when it comes to communications and that also news organizations don't do a better job of actually unpacking these before they spread around these misleading headlines. It's terrible. Yeah, it's I a agree. great point. Like, why wasn't who just as soon as they saw these headlines being like, whoa, 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 and having another press conference being like, no, 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 you're not getting this.
Well, I think yeah. that there's like, and that's where, I mean, we already know and we've seen over the last decade and especially over the last three or four years, we talk about it all the time, right? Like the erosion in trust and confidence from the public about public uh, authorities and in our institutions. We don't trust information anymore. And this is precisely one of the examples that leads to a continued lack of confidence in what people experts are telling us and it's yeah like a failure on the news part a failure on the who for not correcting it but also that leaves room for conspiracy theorists and so you know i'm looking at the timing of all of this unfolding with the who a few days ago pfizer announced that they according to their research are suggesting booster shots, like third doses in about six months because the efficacy goes down. Immediately, the World Health Organization and the CDC contradicted Pfizer and said, nope, we do not believe this. And so in the headlines, you have the drug company saying one thing, the World Health and the, the experts saying another thing. As the public, you're like, well, do I need a booster or not? And why are these people fighting? Is it a power struggle? And usually power struggles are over money and influence. Does one outfit, WHO or CDC, want to be the power authority, the information authority on COVID? Is this about vanity? Is it about egos? Or is it actually big about pharma? public? Big pharma? Or is it about public health? Like, here's the thing, Cynthia. You and I have had many conversations last year about the World Health Organization. I believe in this organization. I believe in its value. But they kind of messed up at the beginning of COVID. Remember, no masks? Remember all mm -hmm. their misinformation? So already we Hold have on. I all wouldn't of say that. They, I wouldn't call it a mess up. No, I, I actually disagree. I don't. While some people might categorize it as a mess up, here's an inconvenient truth that a lot of people don't want to accept. Science is constantly evolving and changing. So you can only make policy based on the data you currently have. But the more with a novel virus, which the coronavirus was when it started, the more knowledge that was gathered and studied, then things change. Remember once upon a time, the no masking, it's oh, because right. we didn't know you're or right. accept that it was For airborne. Sure, no, that, but that's administratively, why it's, it's been well documented administratively that at the World Health Organization, there are severe communication and administrative management problems that came out during the rollout of pandemic communications. And all of that contributes to, period, our lack of public trust. So I think that if, if I'm caught in a power struggle between your vaccine companies and health authorities, I don't want that. I just want legit information. Do it for the public. And that applies to news organizations, not but, too. but that's where it does come down to who are you listening to. For me in Canada, our situation in Canada is very different than what's happening in the European Union, for example. It is very different than what's happening in the UK. It is very different than what's happening in Israel. So for me as a Canadian, I would first go to our Canadian health authorities and public health officials because they understand what's happening on the ground here. And that's the other thing about public health. What is good for Canada may not necessarily be good for another country based on all kinds of factors. And yes, should we be listening to pharmaceutical companies jumping ahead of public health officials, my, my feeling is, heck no. They are in a conflict of interest. They are not there as a doctor. They are there as a company that makes money. That's my opinion, but that's for business in general. So I think that for me personally, if everyone's like, who do you listen to? Because you're right, there's competing voices. I do have a lot of faith in our Canadian health officials and our situation here can't be compared to any other situation elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Look, I'll speak for me. I'm living the double vax mixed life and it is a good one. Thank you very much. Boom. Let's move on. <laughs>